Good evening. My name is Jeremy, and I'll be bringing you the lesson tonight. It's currently uh, one degree outside and about 25 feet of snow. So I hope that you're staying home, you're safe, you're warm. Tonight's lesson is going to be about lions. And, you know, living in Arkansas, we don't really have to deal with lions a whole lot. I think there used to be lions in Arkansas once upon a time, but not currently. But the two lions we're going to be talking about are in the New Testament, one being Jesus and the other being Satan. Now, these two lions, they could not be more opposite. And we're going to look into those differences in tonight's lesson. The Tale of the Two Lions. Which pride are you in? First, let's chat a little bit about lions. As you know, lions live in social units called prides, which are little functional tribes or many societies. They're often used to represent majesty, strength, courage, justice, and military might. The lion is referred to as the king of beasts because it is commonly used as a symbol of kingly power and might. In fact, some of the oldest paintings in history are found in the Chauvet Cave in France and contain artwork called the Gallery of Lions. If you look at the picture to the right, you'll see one of these such galleries. And when you squint uh, just right, you can see the lions. They at first kind of look like bears, but as you start to look at it more and more, you do see the lions. In the New Testament, we also find lions, two of them in fact. One of them is worthy of worship. The other one, however, condemnation. Let's talk about the first lion. It's called the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Jesus is the Lion of the Tribe of Judah. Tonight's verse is about him and is part of a greater story in Revelation 5, where there is a scroll that no one in the universe can open and read. This makes John, the apostle who wrote Revelation, sad, and he even begins to cry. However, a mighty angel tells him, do not weep. The lion of the tribe of Judah, he is able to open the scroll and its seals. Later in the chapter, we learn that this lion is worthy because he became a lamb and he allowed his blood to be shed for the salvation of people from every tribe and language and people and nation. People like you and people like me. Of course, there's not one, but two lions. And this second lion is called the Lion of Destruction. Let's contrast the Lion of the tribe of Judah with the second lion we find in the New Testament. First Peter chapter 5, verse 8, Peter writes to us and he gives us a warning. And he says, be alert and sober of mind. Your enemy, the devil, prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour. The lion, of course, is Satan himself. And what are his powers? Fear, deceit, destruction, devouring, and death. While Jesus is the author of life, Satan is the bringer of death. So which pride are we in? Much like the artwork in those ancient caves, the two lions we discussed tonight paint radically different pictures about what it even means to be human. As people, we will inherently choose to be in one pride or the other. The pride of Jesus or the pride of Satan. To be in the pride of Jesus means to give life to others. We find strength in selflessness and we place others before ourselves. We are quick to do what's right 
We stand in love against evil and never, ever run away from God's purpose. To be in the pride of Satan is to take life. We are selfish, always putting ourselves first. We are quick to do evil, give in to sin, and ignore or even run away from God's purpose in our lives. You know, there's a couple questions that we can ask ourselves. Which pride are we in? Which lion does your life show that you follow? And one of them is internal and one of them is external. I wonder if those two answers would be the same. I wonder if the pride that we think we're in is not the pride that others see us in. You see, both Jesus and Satan, they both want us in their pride. And it's up to us to make a choice. Are we going to be in the pride of Jesus and give life to others? Or are we going to be in the pride of Satan and take life away? That's all for this week. What I really like about this lesson is that we may think that we're in a particular pride following Jesus, but what do other people say we are doing? Which pride would other people say we're in? Is it the pride of Jesus or the pride of Satan? I'll never forget when I was in the college group here at RNC. Back then it was called the CCSU, not Bears for Christ. But regardless, I was working at a place here in town and this one fellow came in to work one day who I'd worked with for a few months and he had on a t-shirt. It's two o'clock. And it said, Mission for Christ. And it was a, a t-shirt that he got going on a mission trip. And I asked him, I said, hey, you go to church? And he said, yeah. And he told me what church he went to. And here's the thing. If he would have never worn that t-shirt, I would have never known he went to church. You see, I thought he was in the pride of Satan. And, and it's not because he was a bad person doing evil things, but he certainly wasn't displaying the kind of talk and action of a Christian. And that always makes me wonder, do people know I'm a Christian by my words and actions? Do they know I'm in the pride of Jesus? Or do I have to wear a shirt that says I go to church for people to know, oh, you're one of those Christians I never knew. I hope that the pride that I think I'm in is also the pride that others see me in. That's a question for me to consider and for you as well. Please take care of yourselves, stay warm, and we'll see you next time.